Would you have predicted the beautiful separation of colors that took place on the filter paper? And to think the number of patterns and colors that you could play around with to end up with such aesthetically pleasing results. What is the reason behind this separation? Why does the solid sketch pen color dot we see in the beginning turn into the spread out separated color? Let's jump into the science behind this and then understand the uses of this process in the real world. Apart from the filter paper, you will find everything else you need to perform this experiment very easily at home. Until now, our understanding of chromatography is the experiment we just performed, the simple separation of the sketch pen into different colors on the filter paper. But in the real world, this very concept is applied in laboratories to perform complex experiments. Chromatography is an analytical technique commonly used for separating a mixture of chemical substances into its individual components. But the principles that chromatography use are actually simple and easy to understand. Let us look at black ink. We know that black ink is black in color. It would be silly to even ask what color it is. But is it actually made of smaller black components? To find out the different components of black ink and to see if those components are also actually black, we can perform a chromatography experiment. In every chromatography experiment, there is always a stationary phase and a mobile phase. In this case, the black ink is the mixture. We will place this on the filter paper, which is our stationary phase, and we will dip the end of this paper in water, which is our mobile phase. The water touching the end of the filter paper moves up the paper, taking along the mixture with it. The water will keep traveling upwards along with the mixture and on the way, the components of the mixture get separated on the filter paper. So in our case, the black ink will separate into the colors it's made up of. This chromatography is called paper chromatography. There are many other kinds such as liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography, exchange chromatography, etc. The mobile phase, also known as the solvent, moves because of something called capillary action. To understand this, first we need to understand adhesion and cohesion. Cohesion means that water molecules are sticky. They like to stay close together. And adhesion means that water molecules are attracted to other substances and like to stick to them. So in capillary action, the solvent, which is the water, is more attracted to the paper, that is the adhesion force, than to itself, which is the cohesion force. So when adhesion force is greater than the cohesion force, a force where the water molecules move away from each other acts on them, moving them upwards in the wick. The mixture, in this case the ink, is similar to the water. The ink is also attracted more to the paper than to itself and additionally to the solvent or the mobile phase. The only difference is that unlike the water, the ink is made up of different kinds of molecules and thus all of them have different levels of attraction. To understand this better, assume that you and your cousin are components of the ink and both of you are at a family reunion. You enjoy talking to people and giving them all hugs, but your cousin does not. As you make your way to the door to leave, you give a hug to every one of your relatives and your cousin just says bye and moves on. So your cousin will make it to the door more quickly than you will. You are more attracted to your relatives, just as some chemical components may be more attracted to the paper than the solvent and thus will not move up the stationary phase as quickly. Your cousin is more attracted to the idea of leaving, which is like the solvent, the mobile phase, and so will easily move along with it, thus traveling a farther distance. The water moves up the wick due to capillary action, then takes the ink along with it and spreads along the stationary medium. So the mixture is separated and its different components are clear. To identify different components, something called the retention factor, which is the RF value, is calculated. The RF value is the ratio between how far a component travels and the distance the solvent travels from a common starting point. 
So if the solvent had traveled 5 centimeters and you had traveled 2.5 cm, then the RF value would be 2.5 divided by 5, which is 0.5 or half. Note that the retention factor has no units as a unit of measurement cancels each other out since it is a pure ratio. In paper chromatography, our stationary phase is paper. But in other forms of chromatography, for example, a common one such as thin layer chromatography, silica gel is used as the stationary phase. As you can see in the picture though, at the surface of the gel, silicon is bonded to the OH hydroxyl group instead of the oxygen. And because of this, the surface of silica is extremely polar. Paper also has a structure where the surface has hydrogen molecules sticking out, making it polar. Now one thing to remember is that polar molecules will react with other polar molecules. The level of attraction will vary based on what the molecules are made of. A non-polar molecule tends to not react with polar molecules. So in the mixture, the most polar component will react with the polar stationary phase the most and thus will travel less with the solvent. This is like you at your family reunion. Now that you understand the attraction between the paper and stationary phase and the mixture, we can look at the polarity of the mobile phase. If we have a non-polar mobile phase, the polar co compounds will stay with the paper and the mobile phase will have a very small chance of dispelling them and so these components will move much less. While the non-polar substances that aren't attracted to the paper will very easily flow with the mobile phase as nothing is holding them back. Now if we make the mobile phase a little more polar, the order in which the components travel will remain the same, but the distance traveled for all the components will increase. The more polar the mobile phase, the more easily it can displace the components and carry them along, so the farther they travel. Now that you understand how paper chromatography works, you can create variations of the standard experiment and test out these concepts. For one, you should change the mobile phase. Try using alcohol as the mobile phase for the experiment with ink. Alcohol is less polar than water due to its larger molecular size. So according to what we learnt, what do you think will happen to the components of the mixture? Will they travel more or less? You can try changing the stationary phase too. Try using a phase that is non-polar. What do you think will happen if you use a non-polar stationary phase? Which components will travel further this time? Also try with different stationary phases, for example, normal paper, chalk, tissue paper, sponge, foam, etc. Let us know what variations you come up with and what you learn from them. Experimenting is the best way to understand, learn and remember. Since you've performed the experiment with sketch pen ink, you can look for a cleaning liquid in your house and use less than a drop to analyze its components. Use thick paper as your stationary phase and water as your solvent. Observe what happens. How many components do you think the liquid is made of? Do you think there'll be a difference if you change the solvent or the stationary phase? You can do it with toothpaste, perform chromatography with toothpaste. You may or may not see separation taking place. If you did not, why do you think it didn't happen? What could have changed to make it work? Read about iron chromatography to understand a bit more about this. Some scientific terms. The stationary phase is the phase in chromatography that does not move and is used as a platform to place the mixture on the paper, filter paper in our case. The mobile phase, the phase that moves on the stationary phase, washing away the mixture with it, also known as solvent, water in our case. The mixture, the substance being tested in chromatography and of which the different components are separated. It's the sketch pen ink for our experiment. Cohesion is the tendency of a liquid to want to stick together. Adhesion, the tendency of a liquid to want to stick to other materials. The retention factor, also known as the RF value, used as a measurement to compare distances traveled by each of the components. A polar molecule is one that has a net dipole of opposing charges, positive and negative, for example, water, ethanol, etc. 
and a non-polar molecule. A molecule that does not have a net dipole moment is a non-polar molecule as there is either equal sharing of electrons or there's a symmetrical arrangement. For example, diatomic elements like hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas and so on, as well as say methane which is CH4. These concepts of chromatography that we learned are the same throughout all the different types of chromatography and are applied in a wide range of places. It is very widely used in pharmaceutical companies and in the chemical and food industries. Pharmaceutical industries use this method both to prepare huge quantities of extremely pure materials and also to analyze the purified compounds for trace contaminants. The Environmental Protection Agency makes the method of chromatography to test drinking water and to monitor air quality. Other important uses of chromatography in everyday life are diagnosis of diseases and disorders, high performance liquid chromatography in fingerprinting and bioinformatics, petrochemicals and catalysis, Ebola immunization, polymer synthesis, liquid chromatography, mass spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance, which is the LCMS NMR techniques it's used heavily there, liquid chromatography. We hope that you enjoyed performing these various chromatography experiments and enjoyed learning about all the concepts behind it. The concepts of such a simple process that you performed have such widely acclaimed uses in everyday life. This is why it's important to understand its applications in the real world and appreciate its role in our life. Goodbye.